person fell. We cannot go according to how much pain the person has or if the body part looks strange. It might be that they don't, can't move the arm. Um, in that case, we will use a, make a splint for the person. You can use any hard object, such as a magazine. We can place it under the person's arm and then we're going to put a bandage around the area. You always start from the point furthest away from the heart and move upwards. Okay, we're just going to lift the arm. You can make the bandage quite tight so that it will actually support the body parts. If you have a scissor, you can cut the bandage. And cut it in half again just to tie a knot to secure the bandage tie a knot at the end if the person needs to keep the arm or the body part close to them you can make a sling with another bandage I'm going to put it around her neck we're going to put the arm into that sling and we're going to just tie it again at the end. Then the person can hold it close to their body and it will be kept secure into the in the bandage. It's always important if the person has hurt themselves that they then will go to the hospital so they can maybe take some x-rays or the doctor can do some additional examinations to make sure that it didn't hurt um, internally. If a person fell on their side, we don't have to move them. We can just leave them in that position. However, if a person fell on their back or they fell face down and we think that they might have injured their neck or their spinal cord because they can't move their arms or their legs or their neck, we're going to have to turn them towards the side and this is called a log roll. We're going to have to be three people. The first person will stay at the head, holding the person's head with their hands next to their ears. The second person will cross the person's arms over their chest. They will place one hand on the shoulder blades, one hand on the buttocks. The third person will cross her arms over to the hip and the other hand will be on the ankle. I will then count up to three and we're going to slowly turn the person towards the side and we're just going to keep the person on her side. One, two, three. And we will keep the person just in this position until the ambulance or other help arrives. Bleeding. If a person is only bleeding minimally, we can just clean the area first. Again, we can use only water or you can maybe add some salt, some soap or disinfectant like savlon or dental. You can use some gauze, bring out and then just clean the area. If there's any visible dirt, you can try to remove it. Then you can use any cloth. Press directly onto the area quite hard for the bleeding to stop. After this, the person can also go to the hospital or a doctor and he can then prescribe some antibiotics and clean the wound again just to avoid any infection. If a person is bleeding a lot and there's a lot of blood coming out, we then don't want to clean the area. Our main focus will be to stop the bleeding. Again, take a cloth, press onto the area as hard as you can because the bleeding needs to stop as quickly as possible. If the bleeding doesn't want to stop or the person lost a lot of blood, this person needs to go to the hospital um, to help stop the bleeding. The person can also then be seen by a doctor to clean the area as well as get antibiotics um, to avoid any further infection. I please want you to remember that this video we're making is for first aid awareness. 
Um, this is not that you are completely competent in first aid. If you want to skill yourself to be a first aider, it is a good idea to do a course, um, an intensive course, and make sure that you're certified when you want to pro provide first aid as well as CPR.